In this test, you will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your answers. In the IELTS listening test, the recording will be played once only. In the exam, you will be advised to write all your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. You are going to listen to a telephone conversation between two people, Hannah and her father. As you can see, there are four alternative answers, A, B, C and D for each question 1 to 5. You have to decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the appropriate letter. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now the test will begin. Remember, you will hear the recording only once, so answer the questions as you listen. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello, double nine two eight four six. Dad, is that you? Anna? Dad, I'm phoning... The line isn't very clear. Yes, I know. I'm on a mobile and the signal isn't very good. I'll see if I can move. Is that any better? Yes, that's much better. Just uh, don't move. I'll try not to. Have you found a place to live yet? Yes, I think I have at last. Wonderful. I'm relieved because I'm fed up looking. I didn't think it was going to take me three weeks. It hasn't been easy for you. I suppose it's the beginning of the academic year and you have all the new students looking for places as well. Yes, that's one reason. But this place is also full of new technology companies and there are lots of young people looking for somewhere to live. And you know what that means. Higher rents as well. Yes, much higher. Well, tell me. How much is it? It isn't cheap for this area. It's £400 a month. That's much more than you had expected. Yes, it is. But I can't face looking any more. I want a place where I can put my things instead of living out of a suitcase. I don't want to stay in this hotel any longer. I guess not. So, what's the new place like? Oh, it's really, really nice. Oh, good. It's in a very quiet street. It's a second floor flat with one double bedroom, a large living room, kitchen and toilet and bathroom. Sounds very nice. Oh, it is. And guess what? Yes? It's got a small roof terrace looking onto the garden at the back. Great. And it's big enough to have my plants and a small table and chairs. Brilliant. Before the speakers continue their conversation, look at questions 6 to 10.
As you listen to the second part of the conversation, complete the numbered spaces 6 to 10. For questions 8 to 10, write no more than three words for each answer. Now, what's the address? It's 22B White Hart Road. 22E. No, 22B. B for banana. Right. And it's White Hart Road? Yes. And the postcode? Oh, you know, I don't think I've got it. OK. No, here it is. It's EX15 9RJ. This line is bad. Is that EX50? No, it's EX15. OK. Uh, I don't think I know the road. It's a side road, but you do know the area because it's off Garrett Lane. Oh, right. Uh, which end? The other end from the stadium. So, it won't be too noisy then? You can still hear it from here when there's a match on. Hmm. When are we going to see you? Well, I was going to come down on Friday evening after work, and then we could bring my things by van on Saturday afternoon. I want to move all of my stuff out to give you and Mum more space. We'll need to hire a van, then. It's OK. I'll pay for it. No, no, don't worry. It'll be a gift from your Mum and me. Oh, Dad, it's OK. I... No, I won't hear of it. We'll pay. All right. Thanks, Dad. And if you're taking everything, we might need to hire a container lorry. <laughs> oh, Dad! I'm only joking. <laughs> I know. I'll hire the van for the Saturday, then. I can pick it up first thing in the morning. Right. And then return it in the evening. Are you sure you don't want to stay overnight? No, I'd best get back the same day. You know what your mum's like. She'll only worry. If I remember rightly, it's about three hours by road? Yes, roughly. Well, if we leave by lunchtime, we'll be there mid-afternoon. OK. Then a couple of hours to unpack. Then? We could go to a nice restaurant round the corner. Definitely. My treat. <laughs> You're on. But I'll have to be away by about 7.30ish. OK. Right then. Um, Mum wants to have a word. I'll see you Friday. Bye, Dad. I'll hand you over to her. Uh, bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a news broadcast about proposed developments in a local area and about a local college. First, look at questions 11 to 14. Listen carefully and decide which four planned developments are mentioned. And now for our main headlines on Southern Local News for today. First of all, the report relating to the proposed motorway and other developments around the village of Tartlesbury was published this morning. And, as has been expected, it has created quite a lot of interest. The new motorway will pass along the north side of the village crossing the River Team less than half a kilometre from the well-known beauty spot, Streve Ford, 
to the northeast of the village. The motorway will cut the village off from the ford, where many children play. But that is not the end of it. There are also plans to build a thousand houses on farmland west of the village. And on top of that, there are proposals to build an industrial estate for new technology companies on the site of the old steelworks on the edge of the village. A new centre with a swimming pool and a very wide range of sports facilities and a large supermarket with other shops are also planned next to the housing estate. Before the broadcast continues, look at questions 15 to 20. You will now listen to the second part of the talk. For questions 15 to 18, put a tick in either column A or column B for each of the people mentioned. For questions 19 and 20, decide which of the four alternatives is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. Mr Jones, a local farmer we spoke to early today, is strongly against the plans. But the local council is pushing for them to be adopted in full. They say that new housing is needed in the area and that it is an opportunity to take advantage of government grants for setting up new technology developments. The mayor, Mr Fun, says, we must make every effort to do our part for the economy of the country and for the local people. This is a golden opportunity to put Tartlesbury on the map. Reactions to Mr Fun's comments have been quick to come. Surprisingly, when we contacted the spokesman of the local conservation group, he was very much for the planned developments. But not all the local groups support the scheme. And, unlike the mayor, the local MP, Mrs Wright, is very much against the planned developments. Mr Khan, a local shopkeeper, had this to say. People are absolutely horrified at what is being proposed here. This is just a chance for some people to make money quickly. But I can assure you that if they think that local people are going to be a walkover, they have another think coming. Of course, we welcome the jobs that the new technology park will bring, but we feel that the large increase in housing and the proposed motorway will destroy the character of the area. I think this is a debate that is going to run on for quite some time, and we here on Local News will keep you informed. And now for something quite different. This year's exam results have just come out, and there are a lot of happy faces out there. It would seem that the number of young people going on to university from the local college in Upton, which is not far from Tartlesbury, has increased by 25% this year. All those who have applied to go to university or into teacher training colleges have found places. This is the first time that there has been a 100% success rate at the college. We spoke earlier to the principal of the college, who said she was very proud of all those who had achieved their aims, and she wished them every success in the future. There will be another news bulletin at 11pm. And for now, it's back to more music from around the world. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part 3. Part 3. You are going to listen to a conversation between two students and a tutor. They are talking about essays. First, look at questions 21 to 25. As you listen, answer the questions. Write no more than four words or a number for each answer. So, Pamela, here's your essay. And, Carl, you've already got yours back. Anything you want to ask or any comments? Can you just go over again for us how the marks for our essays go towards our final grade? Well, um, over the year... You're meant to write five main essays for this course. Yes. And each essay is marked out of 20, which gives you a total of 100 marks. Yes. This coursework makes up 50% of your marks for the year, with the other 50% coming from the written exam. Right. So the five essays contribute to 50% of our final grade for the year. Yes. Mm. You gave me 18 out of 20 for this essay, which gives me a total of 9% towards my final grade for the year. Mm. And I want um, to... And with 14 for this one, I've got 7%. Yes, Pamela. Does that clarify it? Yes. Mm, yes. We did have it explained to us at the beginning of the course. When? In the first tutorial. OK. I think we'd better move on now. About your last essay, have either of you any questions or comments? You gave me 18 for this paper. What was the big difference between this piece and the previous one? I actually thought the first one was better. Well, there was quite a marked difference. Really? Yes. It looked as if you had actually done quite a bit of research. You had quite a lot of relevant examples, especially on the historical side. You even found some information that I was not even aware of. Your sources were also very sound. And on top of that, your answer was very well organised indeed, and the writing style was very elegant. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. I must say that it was the best piece of writing for a paper that we've seen for quite some time. I have to say, though, it took me a very long time to put it together. How long? At least two weeks. But it was well worth it. Can I just ask you if it's possible to rewrite the first essay of the term? It's really brought my average down. I'm sorry, but it's impossible. Is there no way to do it? I'm afraid not. OK. Right. I'll just have to try to do better than average on the others. And Pamela? Well... To be honest, on the whole, I'm happy with my marks. Again, your research was very good. And you gave quite a long list of source material, which was very good. I spent quite a lot of time on this essay, more than the others. Well, again, it shows. What about the organisation? I was a bit worried about that. Your organisation, I have to say, was excellent. Oh! But as regards your style... Yes. It is slightly too informal here and there. Mm. I think you need to tighten this up a little. Mm, OK. I only wish I'd put a bit more effort into the first one as well now. But I would like to know how I can get my marks up even higher. What do I have to do, specifically? Well, your work could do with being more thoroughly checked. You have quite a few spelling mistakes. Yes, I know. If it's anything, I think it's the computer. Hmm? Well, I'm not very good at typing. Two fingers, really. And when I finish something like this, I find it difficult, even depressing, to go over it carefully again. But it's affecting your marks. Mm. Your previous essay was much better than this one. 
Sometimes it's difficult to follow what's being said because of the frequency of mistakes. A couple of years ago, the university authorities would have been more lenient, but now they're very hot on presentation, and have been coming down heavily on things like grammar and spelling.、Mm. In fact, I am obliged to deduct marks from every piece of work which is not handed in fairly free of mistakes. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a lecture on life at work, which is being given as part of a series of lectures on productivity and work practices. First, look at questions thirty-one to thirty-five. As you can see, there are four alternative answers: A, B, C, and D for each question. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer, and circle the correct letter. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Charles Butt, and I shall be giving you a series of lectures on productivity and work practices over the coming weeks. There will be ten lectures in the mornings as part of this course, and in addition, there will be three lectures in the evenings from six to eight, which will be given by outside speakers. I would like first to look at a recent report on life at work. The report shows that the average British worker takes less than half an hour for lunch, twenty-seven minutes to be precise, and that sick leave is on the increase. The drop in the length of time spent on lunch was nine minutes when compared to last year, down from 36 minutes. According to the report, this is the first time that the average lunch break has fallen below half an hour. As regards sick leave, you can see that the average figure is 10 days per year. That's up by one day in 2002 compared to 2001. While physical illness was given as the most common reason for absence in the case of non-manual workers, stress was the most common cause of long-term absence. It's worth noting here that nine out of ten workers claim that stress is a problem in their organisation, and that eight out of ten bosses are feeling more stressed than ever before. I would just like to say here that we will be looking at the stress in work and study at a later date, and we'll be looking particularly at ways of dealing with it in studying, particularly for exams. You can see from the calendar that Professor Appleyard will be giving a lecture on this topic the week after next. The report also says that just below 50% of workers claim that they were taking less time off for holidays than they were entitled to. I'm not sure that this will be believed by the employers. Previous surveys have suggested that about one third of days that have been taken by workers as days off sick were regarded by bosses as not being the result of genuine illness. Some more hard data is required to corroborate both these claims. Before the speaker continues, look at questions thirty-six to forty.
As you listen, answer questions 36 to 40. All this suggests that employers are driving their workers too hard. The effects of overworking mean that workers are now being stretched beyond their limits, both physically and mentally. This is borne out by the increase in sick leave. However, looked at from the employer's point of view, the picture may not be the same. Employers see that workers protest too much, but bearing in mind the data about the number of bosses feeling much more stressed than before, we need to think about this carefully. It's interesting to note that productivity has gone up in many areas of industry. In 2001, the local car plant had one of the sharpest increases in average productivity, with the number of vehicles per employee rising by over 30% a year. A new assembly line came into operation at the beginning of 2002, affecting productivity, which increased to the 100 vehicles per worker mark by the end of the year. This is a stunning achievement for an industry which was not long ago considered to be collapsing. It would be interesting to do a survey of the work life at the plant. Those of you who have opted to do the project and reduce the number of essays you have to do may want to look into this. Please see me at the end of the lecture. Right, now, let us move on to something else which I think... That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.